Hello, and welcome to our discussion on likelihood ratios. The definition of likelihood ratios is that a given test result would be expected in a patient with the target disorder compared to the likelihood that the same test result would be expected in a patient without the target disorder. In other words, likelihood ratios tell us how much we should shift our suspicion for a particular test result. Likelihood ratios incorporate sensitivity and specificity of a test into one single measure. The general equation for likelihood ratios is the probability of a patient with the condition having the test result over the probability of a patient without the condition having the test result. For further information of positive likelihood ratio equations, you can refer to our handout seen below this video. A positive likelihood ratio is the probability of a positive test in persons with the disease, which is also known as sensitivity. Positive likelihood ratios are used to rule in a disease. When considering a test, the first thing that you want to do is ensure that the study that was validating the test was done with high quality. For further discussion on that, see our video on spectrum bias. All things considered, the higher the likelihood ratio, the better the test result. A negative likelihood ratio is the probability of a negative test in persons without the disease, also known as specificity. For more information on the equation, refer to our handout below this video. Negative likelihood ratios are used to rule out a disease. When considering a test, the first thing that you want to do is ensure that the study that was validating the test was done with high quality. For further discussion on that, see our video on spectrum bias. All things considered, the smaller the likelihood ratio, the better the test. Likelihood ratios are used to choose a diagnostic test and calculate post-test probability. The advantages of likelihood ratios is that it is the quickest way to go from a pre-test probability to a post-test probability and try to diagnose a patient with a disorder. It is also used to calculate for all levels of the test results and not dependent on the prevalence of a condition in the population. And it can be applied to an individual patient or client as opposed to groups. Now let's jump down to the bottom of the second page of the handout to the scenario example. We will see a chart that contains the likelihood ratios of clinical findings for the diagnosis of osteoporosis in a single patient. Let's say the general prevalence rate for the diagnosis of osteoporosis is 30%. This means that the pretest probability of a patient going to see their physician for this diagnosis is 30%. The physician will then test the individual to see if they have the diagnosis of osteoporosis. Please note that the blue line represents the weight test and the green line represents the hand skin fold test. Now let's say the patient completes the hand skin fold test first and they test positive. The physician would then chart the positive likelihood ratio for that test onto the Fagan nomogram, which you will see at the top of the page. If we look at the chart at the bottom of the handout, we will see that the positive likelihood ratio for the hand skin fold test is 1.2. The physician will place a mark where it says 30% on the Fagan nomogram pretest probability line and then another mark on the middle line, which represents likelihood ratios, at 1.2. They will then take a straight edge to the, figure out the post-test probability, which will tell us the proportion of patients testing positive for osteoporosis who truly have this condition. The physician will see that after these values are charted on the Fagan nomogram, that the post-test probability is a little under 40%. This 8 to 10% jump from 30% pre-test probability isn't really enough to rule in or confirm the diagnosis of osteoporosis in this patient so the physician would want to try another test, such as the weight test. Let's say after completing this test, the patient tests positive for osteoporosis. The physician would again chart the 30% pretest probability and the positive likelihood ratio for the weight test onto the Fagan nomogram. We can see from the chart at the bottom of the handout that the positive likelihood ratio for the weight test is 7.3. The physician sees after charting these values on the Fagan nomogram that the post-test probability is about 70%. This is about 30% more than the post-test probability of the hand skin fold test. Because of this, the physician would choose the weight test when they need to choose a test to rule in the diagnosis of osteoporosis in any of his patients who come in with symptoms representing this condition. Now let's switch it up and say that this same individual with a 30% prevalence rate of having the diagnosis of osteoporosis goes to their physician and they complete the weight test first. The results from the test come back negative for the diagnosis of osteoporosis. You see in the chart at the bottom of the handout that the negative likelihood ratio is 0.8 and after these values are charted on the Fagan nomogram, the post-test probability, 
which again will tell us the proportion of patients testing positive for osteoporosis who truly have this condition is about 23%. This is represented by the red line. So this 7% decline from 30% to 23% isn't really enough to rule out the diagnosis of osteoporosis, so you would want to try another test such as the hand skin fold test, which is represented by the blue line. After completing this test, the patient ends up testing negative for the diagnosis of osteoporosis. So if we look at the chart at the bottom of the handout again, we will see that the negative likelihood ratio for the hand skin fold test is 0.4. So the physician will chart the pretest probability on the negative likelihood ratio on the Fagan nomogram, and they will see that the post-test probability is about 12%. This is 11% less than the post-test probability of the weight test and an 18% decline from the 30% pretest probability. Because of this, out of the two tests, the physician would choose the hand skin fold test when they need to choose a test to rule out the diagnosis of osteoporosis in any of his patients who come in with symptoms representing this condition.